E3 kicked off a real season on the Saturday the 12th. Still sort of, still kind of, because first up was the Wholesome Direct. Still technically not part of E3, but definitely worth watching, as they covered 50 lovely little indie games in just under an hour or so, and that's not even counting the ones they put in a montage. Unfortunately, that's way too many for me to run through here. I'm still recovering from SGF, but honestly, even just the amount of Building Freedom Parallels is showing off is enough for me, let alone Bear and Breakfast. I really encourage you to check this one out. There was no bloat whatsoever, just game after game, punctuated only by a few calls to donate to charity and actually cause some tangible change in society. Pretty please. And with nary a gun in sight, this one I'd be feeling actually pretty good about things. In time for Ubisoft to come and ruin it all. Yep, E3 finally kicked off with the first of the big boys. And they began with a quarter of an hour look at Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. Insert reminder that Tom Clancy has been dead for coming up eight years here. So, what did we learn? Well, you can shoot alien zombies with a gun. That's it. That's literally it. The worst part, apparently this is the one they killed Pioneer for. Then was Rocksmith Plus, a hundred dollar a year subscription service to core charts already freely available online. Following that was the release date for Riders Republic. Think steep, but with the always online weird progression fake sponsor confusing nonsense of steep or the crew 2 or trials. It's a Ubisoft sports game. Rainbow Six Siege is still going. Control C, Control V, and then finally something I'm interested in. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is getting a free discovery tour. I actually previously said on stream that I'd love that because England has such a weird and long history and all the place names in Valhalla are so nearly recognisable, I want to learn all about them and how they got to where they are today. And not only that, this 90 hour game that features part of Norway, England, Asgard, I assume Jotunheim but I haven't got that far yet, potentially a bit of North America but I haven't got that far either, as an expansion out that covers Ireland, another one in the works for France, is going to get yet more. Just what it needs. And then they promote series 2 of the Apple TV show Mythic Quest. Apparently the show is made by Ubisoft Film and Television, so used Ubi to really get a feel for a game company's workplace culture to accurately parody. Which is awkward, given the circumstances. I hear that this series, they're firing Ashley Birch. I'm surprised she's lasted this long, because as we all know, women don't sell. They also promote the movie adaptation of their VR exclusive game Werewolves Within. If you can find me proof of one person who has actually played Werewolves Within and then demanded a movie adaptation, I will genuinely pay you money. Even Ubisoft themselves haven't heard of it. Then they confirmed that Far Cry 6 is definitely not going to be the one to get me into the series. They gave Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope an official reveal. Who could have seen that coming, eh Nintendo? And capped it off by wheeling out CEO Eve Gilmo not to find the address of rampant sexual harassment at Ubisoft and the failure to do anything meaningful about it, not to announce his resignation for either being so evil that he allowed it to continue under his watch, or so negligent that it all just went on somehow without him having any idea, but instead to announce the final game. And the rules state that this has to be the big one. Summer Games first had Elden Ring, Day of the Devs had Oxenfree 2, Admittedly, Wholesome Direct had a Kickstarter for Lord and Lot, but this is E3 proper, this is Ubisoft. We've had no news about Beyond Good and Evil 2 in a long while, Splinter Cell even longer, and we know they've recently got their hands on the Star Wars IP. So, Avatar. It was Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, based off that movie that nobody can quote a single line from. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Ubisoft Forward was then succeeded by Devolver Forwarder, or Devolver Max Pass Plus. Also, technically not part of E3, this was Devolver Digital's yearly way of mocking all the horrible practices we've come to view as standard, like microtransactions and pre-order bonuses, and squeeze some game shows in there too. But with the news earlier in the year that Devolver may be planning to go public to make even more money than their reported billion dollar valuation, it seems now to be a bit more like a checklist that we'll use in a few years' time when the company is crushed under the dress shoes of people with job titles like Professional Investor. I wasn't much in the mood for catching this one live. That being said, I did go back and watch it later. Nothing particularly caught my eye besides perhaps Phantom Abyss, which I swear I've seen somewhere before. But if you are in the mood for some games sprinkled between 30 minutes of pretty funny faffing around, then yeah, go on, give it a watch. And we rounded off the day with Gearbox, but I've already watched three shows today, and with four more tomorrow, you can wander around the Borderlands film set all you like. You aren't going to find a single damn that I have to give.